Welcome to Under the Plum Bob Podcast, the podcast about all things related to The Sims. Hey, it's Jess, and I'm here today with... Jen, it's me. Yay, hi. It's us again. <laughs> it's your double J's. Yep. Today we are going to talk about console games, because we realized we don't cover those too often. Yeah, and a lot of people have been requesting it for a while. We're finally going to talk about the consoles. Um, we are going to start with like the Sims 2 era. Um, well, first of all, did you ever play any of the console? Yeah. So just a spoiler alert, I'm going to be in both episodes because like all these games came out around the time I was in high school, at least most of them. So like the Sims 1 forward to Sims 3, I played on the consoles. And then Sims 3, I kind of, I had it. No, we rented it. I played it, like, a few times, and I was like, this is nothing really like the computer. So I quit playing around then. Did you play any? Yeah, actually, that's how I started playing The Sims. Um, Well, my friend in high school had Sims 1, but I really didn't play it much with her. I watched her play mainly. But uh, my family had Sims 2 on the console, on the PlayStation. Yes. So that was where a lot of hours got dumped in, and then... We rented Sims 3 a few times, and then I made the jump to computers. It's funny that both of us said that we rented it. Yeah. <laughs> but nowadays, we don't do that anymore. No. <laughs> Did you use Gamefly? No, actually, uh, we still had like family video that we rented from. We had that until like two years ago around here. Yeah, I think our last one just closed a couple years ago or so. Sadly. Gamefly was pretty good, but um, it's not good if you have ADHD and you're like, I can't even remember to take this up <laughs> to my mailbox. I get that. I get that. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about Sims 2 first, which is where I got my start. It's actually the fourth Sims console game that came out. It was released for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, the GameCube, the Nintendo DS, the Game Boy Advance, the PSP, and mobile phones. I don't remember it being on mobile phones. I don't either, and I'll say this. um, So we're just going a little bit backwards. In the first part, a lot of these games were on, well, now, like two of them, I think, were on the Engage, which was apparently a phone console. Interesting. It kind of looked like a sidekick. Oh, you know what? I am remembering it more now. Back in our day, kids. Yeah. <laughs> there were phones that were video game consoles. <laughs> and I'm amazed they had such awesome phones in 2005. Yeah, right. I know I was rocking my Motorola Razor. <laughs> I didn't even have that. I was really <laughs> I was really poor and I had a little Nokia like Oh yeah. Had, like, double buttons and I'm like this is the coolest thing ever it has double buttons I saved like all of my summer like work money to get that phone (laughs) oh that's so sweet yeah what color was it it was silver because I couldn't afford the other colors (laughs) oh I was happy with it though that was a fun phone yeah I bet all the rage Uh, let's see where was I uh, yeah, in Create a Sim in The Sims 2 console, uh, players can generate and customize The Sims with ample amount of customization options. Uh, it also offers exclusive features and tools that aren't available in the PC version. Uh, you can get aspiration, personality name, gender, skin tone, body type, hair, and accessories for the hair, facial hair, makeup, only for the females, sadly. <laughs> Come on. That's a 2005 thing. Yep. <laughs> even though like in my like niche group like guys were wearing eyeliner and stuff <laughs> well like billy joe my the love of my life was wearing eyeliner mm-hmm. in my chemical romance yep so it wasn't just for female sims but yeah whatever <laughs> uh, and you can even have tattoos um Body parts can be morphed individually from one another with a slider, which I don't remember doing that. I think I basically just said, okay, whatever body you give me, I'll just (laughs) change the hair and the outward appearance more than, like, morphing it. Right. 
Uh, you can also restructure the head for lips, nose, eyes, and head shape. Which one's again? I did not do that either. I don't think I did either. No, that was... I I really didn't get into Cass until I made the switch to computer. You know, that reminds me of Tony Hawk. Because you could do... I feel like probably all these games kind of got stuff from each other, though. Because oh, I'm sure that didn't just come from Tony Hawk, but... I played a lot of Tony Hawk 3, and you could, like, you can move the arms, the legs, the boobs, the butt. I think you could do package on guys. I don't remember. Those are some good games, too. Yes. As for fashion for your Sims, uh, you could have hats, glasses, tops, bottoms, shoes, and various jewelry accessories. Every type of top can be put on one another. And can be further customized by changing the style of the sleeves or the torso, which I think is pretty cool. So you can change like the cut or just like how it flows on you. Yeah, and I threw in the note of very early 2000s era fashion because we were all about the layering back yep. then. <laughs> I know, I, I just saw uh, a post recently. It was like, do we really want to go back to this fashion? And it was like tank top on t-shirt on long sleeve shirt <laughs> oh no yes. i mean kids let's do it yep if it if not now it'll come up in another 20 years and honestly if you want to start like taking the stuff that was popular when we were kids you need to take all of it yeah good and the bad frosted lipstick and your blue eyeshadow yes <laughs> Uh, early 2000s. I love it. Yes. Well, as for gameplay in The Sims 2, it progresses much like the other Sims console games. Your Sim is given a number of objectives to complete while advancing in their career, and you can move from house to house as your objectives are completed, and your player advances in the story. As many hours as I dumped into this, I never left the same house, so I failed that one. <laughs> oh, I did. I got, I was like, I need to see all of these houses. My favorite was the ghost so i didn't get through all of it i got to like a cruise ship part of it but my favorite was the um it was like a movie lot oh nice there was a lady it was like an old western movie lot and there was like a lady dressed up as the bride of frankenstein and i don't remember the other two i just remember her because like i loved her clothes cuz i was like an edgy little emo kid and i was like <laughs> i want these <laughs> yeah i was more focused on just having fun with my sims and making my crappy little house a home so it was it the first house with the guy and the girl yeah but you know i made it work i had fun that's all that matters in the end i think yeah. even though i didn't win the game i didn't win it either like I said, I got stuck after there was, like, a cruise ship level, and I don't remember what you had to do, but there was a lady with a dog purse, and that's all I remember. Well, while the objective in previous games, like Bustin' Out, were more career-oriented, the objectives in The Sims 2 not only focus on advancing in your career, but the goals to be completed can also be more aspirational, like buying better stuff, improving a skill, or beating a bully sim at foosball. Oh, I don't remember that. I had a foosball table in my kitchen. What's a bully sim? I don't remember that. What was that? I think it was just like somebody that was mean to your sim, like your little enemy. Oh, okay. I seem to remember um, Goopy was my sim's bully. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because they had the... It'll come up in a few minutes. Yeah. But they had the some of them. Yeah, and there was one named Goopy, and yeah, I I will never forget his name just because <laughs> I remember like who's named Goopy? Why do you think you can be mean to me? They named him like, and then they had a food after him, right? Goopy Carbonara. Goopy, yeah, <laughs> uh, it would. I need that. <laughs> Uh, the game lets the player control the Sims directly rather than through point and click movement, and I do I remember this like you basically just. Wherever you push your, like, pointer, yeah, that's where your sim would go. I would get so sick because I would have them just, like, looping through the house, and it got me so dizzy. <laughs> it reminded me when I started playing Animal Crossing, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, there's a lot of games like that, but that's definitely, like, unique for this Sims game. Especially coming from, like, computers. Yeah, because all the other ones were, like, the computer, you take your 
joystick and you point them to where you want them to go. Yeah. And then you click on them, but you're not like yeah. directly moving them. Well, that had mixed reaction from fans, which I, I can understand. Yeah. But that's that's all I was used to, so I didn't complain about it. <laughs> uh, that gives The Sims 2 gameplay significantly more interactivity and enables the player to control their Sims similarly to an adventure or a role-playing game, which is kind of like what we were talking about there. Yeah. Uh, the game carries many things over from the PC version, such as your wants, but it does not carry over the aging and the pregnancy. Sims cannot have jobs, but they can complete mission missions and play mini games to earn some money for a living. Which I th- thought it had jobs because I remember my Sims like going away for part of the day, but maybe that was. No, I vaguely remember that too. So yeah, because I swear I had like a Sim in the science career. It says later on in the notes it says like that you did mini games, but I do remember. I don't remember many games. I do remember, like, going away for a job. Maybe they changed it and this didn't get updated. <laughs> Probably. We are talking about, like, a 15-year-old game on the Sims Wiki. I also think, like, we're so far removed from when some of these games were out. There's not, like, a lot of corroboration. It's like, oh, hey, I remember this. Put it in. And nobody checks it. Yeah. Uh, So the game can be played alone or with another player if the second joypad is connected, which I did. Uh, I would play with my friend from high school. (laughs) Best story of that is I went over to her house one day at around noon and we started playing. And all of a sudden her mom comes in the room. Her mom got off work at six o'clock that night. So we had been playing for over six hours without a break. That sounds fun, though. I mean, it just flew right by. Yeah. Uh, That allowed the players to jump in, playing with a preoccupied family, have them be evicted to make room for their sims, or by moving into one of the vacant houses. So, so like, when you had that first family, so did you, like, you and your second player, you would move in there, and, like, the lady and the other dude would leave? Yeah, because we had all our own created sims. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do remember the people that were in there. And they would keep coming back, like, to bug us. But, yeah, we kicked them out and took over their house. Well, I would come back to bug you, too. You stole their house. (laughs) I get that. I get that. That's fair. Uh, But when a sim enters a conversation with another sim, the camera will zoom in on the conversation, and the player chooses their actions from a menu. So more like the PC games there. Uh, The background and the sims themselves will differ depending on your sims' relationship with the other sims. For instance, if the sims are in love, and I do remember this one, the background will be pink and they will move closer to each other. It's like a nice, like, soft pink, like, effect. Yeah, I kind of remember that, too. Really soft, romantic feel to the conversation. (laughs) Uh, The player can also pick different food choices and mix them depending on the combination and the sims' cooking skill. Doing so may give a higher boost to the hunger meter or even make them sick if the combination or the cooking skill are bad enough. I remember that. I do too. I've I've made plenty of Sims sick. That was something that I think we probably could have brought back. Oh yeah, that would have been so cool, like mixing food options. Yeah, and you know, like, granted, yeah, you can use your food, but you can't, like, make new food. Well, I guess it's not new. But, you know, like, you can make food that you haven't made before. And then it's like, yeah, you have your bad quality food, but this would be, like, realistic that you get sick when you make something that doesn't go together. Yeah. A little bit of realism that could have been injected into later games. As for death, that's different from death in The Sims 2 on the computer. Uh, When a sim dies, they're not lost forever. Rather, they remain on the lot as ghosts and can haunt the other residents of the lot using interactions like puke and possess. And I had fun with that because you could also float through the walls. Yes, yes, I loved that. You just go straight through to the other side of the property. Uh, Your sims can be brought back to life at any point by bribing the Grim Reaper or defeating him in a fiddle contest. I got really good at doing that. (laughs) Yeah, that was fun. Mm Mm-hmm. There is a method of death in the console that no other Sims game has. So when your Sim is re- resurrected via the Grim Reaper, uh, the grave will, will be left there. 
and you can go to the grave and dance on it and your sim will automatically be set on fire and die. So you start the whole process over again. Couldn't you do that to um, somebody else's grave too? Yeah. As long as it was a grave, yeah. It's just like when you came back to life, your grave didn't disappear. Yeah, okay. There are 12 different locations that Sims can travel to across Pleasant View, Strangetown, and Melbourne throughout the course of the game. In order to unlock a new location, the player must complete Golden Wants, basically a want that is a mission. And in the two-player mode, only one player has Golden Wants. As a Sim advances through the game, new locations will become available, and there are eight main and four small locations in story mode, and four others in free play mode. But, like I said, I only knew the one place. (laughs) We pretty much stuck to the house. Uh, There are a variety of different characters on different lots. There are some NPCs and some playable characters. Uh, They have their own personalities, aspirations, goals, and fears. And a lot of these are names we do remember. We got Don Lothario, Dina and Nina Caliente. Then we got Patrizio Monti, Isabella Monti, and Goopy. Goopy Gills Carbo. <laughs> what a name. I know. <laughs> he was such a jerk. <laughs> uh, they all appear as characters in certain locations. And then you got Bob and Betty Newby. They appear as characters in free play mode. While some characters are initially NPCs, it is actually possible to unlock them as playable characters. And you can either do that by becoming their best friend or lover, and then choosing to, like, the ask to move in or propose. So basically, like, how you do it in every other game. If you want an NPC in your family, you either ask them to move in or you marry them. If the character accepts, they will follow the player's created sim to different lots as a sort of companion, and the player can switch between them at any point. I really thought that it was Dina that was the lady with the purse in the game, but I guess it wasn't. I just looked it up and it wasn't her. Ah. Oh, well. There's a lady with a dog in a purse and it always reminded me of Paris Hilton. <laughs> nice. I loved it. <laughs> I think I remember her, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so there is a BS version, a Game Boy Advance version, PSP, and I didn't find anything about the phone, so Sims DS was the player's car breaks down in Strange Town, and upon arrival, an anonymous donor grants the player the deed to a hotel, which can be operated and customized at the player's discretion. Your job is to bring life into Strange Town by encouraging people to come to your hotel. This is like a whole nother game. Yeah. I was just like skimming these, and I'm like, wow, there's like, this is like really story driven. So... To note, too, in The Sims 1, I was having a lot of trouble writing these because other versions of games other than the console version, like the Game Boys and the Nintendos and stuff, they were just, like, completely different games. It was like a standalone thing altogether. It's This is wild. It really is. So basically, you satisfy your guests. There are several ways to in which you make Strange Town a nice place to warm up in but it is up to you to find it by making other sims happy, putting goons in jail, vanquishing aliens, shutting down robots, and doing missions for others. That sounds like a fun game. It really does. And I still have a DS. I bet I could get that. Oh, nice. I never had one. I'd be interested in finding one and playing this. Get you one. It's lovely. I have a Galaxy one. You can Ooh. get a nice, pretty Galaxy one for probably less than I paid back then. <laughs> The GBA version, get this a Game Boy Advance, in case you guys weren't aware. The Sims 2 takes place in Strange Town again, shares the same GUI, which is like layout type stuff. Players are guided through goal-oriented game based on the reality television concept, in which partitions of the game are divided into episodes. The player sim is working for Daddy Big Bucks. His most recent scheme to make money happens to be a TV show, with the player being the main character. The player has to complete aspects of the plot in different missions and gain bonus points at the end of each mission for talking to people badly, nicely, etc. And they even offer the player to choose the people in town or the player sim. So. Interesting. That was like really capitalizing because that was like really where reality TV was starting to take off. That was like Big Brother. That's like Mm -hmm. exactly Big Brother. Um, I think that was just like coming off the real world. 
Yeah, I forgot about that temporarily. That was like one of the original like reality TV shows. Yeah. I remember watching that. I didn't watch it because it was on MTV and I wasn't really allowed to watch MTV. Ah. Yeah, I wasn't until I was in high school. <laughs> right, right. Also, Daddy Big Bucks. That's a name. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was in the old games, if I'm remembering correctly. He was in the Game Boy version of the old games. Uh, and he was Malcolm Landgrab, but not Malcolm Landgrab. Quote, unquote, Malcolm Landgrab. Okay, this is Daddy Big Bucks is his alter ego. Yes. If that's not canon, it is now. <laughs> so change your Malcolm to Daddy Big Bucks. Yes. In your games now. Give him that makeover. <laughs> yeah. Make him a sugar daddy. Hey, there's a sugar baby, sugar daddy, sugar mommy. Um, What is that called? Mod? There's a mod. Ooh. Um, it's by Kisiu. If you guys are interested, tag me. I will tell you. But look it up. It's really fun. That sounds fun. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that one up too. Um... PSP. The game begins with the player driving into Strange Town, presumably n- road to nowhere in their car, when a plumb bob flies towards the player, damages their car, and causes them to lose control. Fortunately, the player finds a gas station. The player takes their car into the garage. At that point, the player takes control. You're introduced to a vehicle mechanic named Oscar, who, after a brief tutorial on teaching the player how to talk to NPCs, informs the player their car will only take a short while to fix. So, sorry, uh, the plumb blob flying towards the player reminded me, I saw this post on Instagram where uh, they were talking about like this theory that the Sims know that there's a plumb bob above them. Ooh. Yeah, it was really interesting. That makes sense, though. Yeah. Like, they, you have to... I don't know. Some people are oblivious. Maybe there's like towns of people who are oblivious. Yeah. <laughs> but I read that. I'm like, interesting. That makes sense. I like that. Um, so you're introduced to NPCs, including Bella Goth, who claims to be abducted by aliens, completing tasks, and being taught the basic objective of the game, which is secret secret hunting for the store clerk. So like getting people's secrets. Which we cover, there's the mod for that, we cover that in the console episode, or I'm sorry, sacrificial episode, we cover that, join our Patreon, you will hear it Yeah. after this comes out. Yeah, that's a secret spoiler, that'll, that'll be our next bonus episode, so if you want to hear all about that, join our Patreon. That's me and Allie. $3 a month gets you all the bonus episodes. Yeah. And you get to talk to us in the Discord, and you can yell at me in the Discord and be like, hey, you forgot this as part of your notes <laughs> from the consoles. Um, so... Is this where the Bella Goth got abducted by aliens thing came from? I don't know. Because I know she's not in Sims 2, technically, and then there's a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, she got abducted by aliens. I would think so, and somebody... I have watched a lot of theory videos. Somebody covered that in one of their theory videos. They're like, hey, Bella Goth in the Sims 2 on the console, she got abducted by aliens. So this is saying that Bella Goth got abducted by aliens. And that's why she doesn't know where she's from. And that's why, um, and then the whole Caliente, they were aliens. So they. You know what? I, we probably have covered this too. <laughs> We did, but I don't remember if it went that far. And you know what? I'm probably pulling from my own notes because I think I did the notes on that. Uh, I said it. It was me. (laughs) Canon. Yep. We know our own content. (laughs) Right. Okay. So the player informs Deputy Duncan about the situation. He replies he can do nothing about it. Mm, sounds realistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and suggests that the player find a place to stay. After having bought Bella's house for pocket change and getting donuts for Deputy Duncan. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> the player gets a lift into Strange, in Strange Town's 
Paradise Place, only to find more tasks and mysteries. So this sounds kind of fun, too. Like, it's a mystery yeah. thing. It is finally known that the green... Di- Here you go. Ah. It's finally that the green diamond appearing throughout the game is a mind-controlling device controlled by an outside force. Self-aware. Very self-aware in this one. The main antagonist also realizes that the protagonist is really controlled by another outside force, just like playing a game. It is unknown if the Green Diamond's role applies to other Sims games, but it may be possible since when the player changes the active Sim, the other one has free will. And then this just tells you, like, the people in this game are um, Loki Beaker, General Buzz Grunt, Cersei Beaker, Pascal Curious, Laszlo Curious, Bella Goth, and others. Yep, and those ones are all from the computer version of strange town sans yeah. bella goth we did an episode on strange town yeah. yes yes yeah i know we had the beakers yep. for sure yep we had an in-depth dive on that one i think that was ava and caitlin that covered that one that was old i remember doing notes on that too mm-hmm. i think i edited it i remember that one <laughs> good job proud of you oh thank you so this is trivia that goes through, I guess, it didn't say which version exactly, so this is covering just The Sims 2 for the console. When using the metal detector, Sims come across a copy of the herb Sims in the City. <laughs> they just throw it on the ground and discuss. <laughs> it was not that bad of a game, guys. I was about to say, as they should. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I liked... Okay, I like the skaters, but the Black Eyed Peas, I am not a very Black Eyed Peas fan. I do share a birthday with Fergie, however, I don't claim her. (laughs) Nice. Or not nice. (laughs) Right. I also share a birthday with Brenda Song, I claim her. I share a birthday with David Hasselhoff. (laughs) That's cool, though. Uh, Okay. In decorative section of Buy Mode, there is a painting titled Jaded, J-A-Y-D-E-D, that features a girl with purple hair who looks very much like the girl on the cover of The Herbs, Jade, J-A-Y-D-E. At the end of the game, there's a video with bloopers from the intro. That They were cashing in on like that Pixar credit yeah. nonsense. <laughs> that, I'm not for that kind of corniness, so... Mm-hmm. I mean, if you like it, you like it. Okay, yeah. Much different things. Um, in debug mode, when max everyone is used under relationships with the cheats now, a sim named Pat Newby, Paul Holder, and Jeb Twartson will be added to the player's relationships, but they will have no thumbnail and cannot be found. The exception to this is if all neighbors in free play are deleted, the player can throw a party in which Paul and Jeb visit them. But you don't see Pat? Poor Pat. <laughs> Pat's not invited. No. Nope. <laughs> in debug mode cast, there is an unused character named Ghost. He has the appearance of an elder and wears a black suit. Um, Sims who died once will not get another urn tombstone unless their previous one was deleted. I do remember that one, like from uh the PlayStation version. Like you, you, you can have your uh tombstone there, but. If you die again, you're going to get sent right back to the same tombstone. Oh, okay. Well, it's not possible to sell objects in story locations. It's possible to sell floors, wallpaper, and walls slash fences to get some extra simoleons. Sims with high creativity skill will have a 100% success rate when using Draw Portrait. This social gives five relationship points, making it the most effective way to make friends. However... It will only be available until they are friends. So after you're friends with somebody, you can't draw them anymore. Lame. Sims who died on another lot will be alive when visiting other lots, but ghosts on their home lot. Hmm. Oh, I think I remember that. Sims stargazing with a telescope can be abducted by aliens. Oh, yeah. Oh, I do remember that because I was like, why isn't he pregnant? I know. my one sim that was in the science track i had her get abducted so many times so it says that you'll miss your carpool but you won't get in trouble what happened when they got abducted 
when they got abducted, they would literally be gone for like three days. Oh. Yeah. It was, it was something crazy like that. It wasn't just like in the other games where you're gone for like a couple hours and then boom, you're back. You are gone for like more than a day. It, I feel like it was at least three days at a time. Wow. Mm-hmm. And everything just went on without you. Um, dishes, books, trash piles, and ash piles affect the fire code. There's apparently a fire code. I think I remember that because, uh, like when I would be like rearranging stuff in the house, if I put something in front of like the stove or something, it would shoot up into the red. So I'm like, oh, gotta move that. Yeah, okay, okay. If a player stops controlling their sim while in direct control, eventually the sim will start doing things autonomously. I remember that because I'd get up to go to the bathroom and forget to pause and my sim would be doing stuff. There is a poster of Will Wright in the buy catalog. The same poster can be seen in the background of Cass in the university expansion for the PC version. However, it's not in the catalog for the PC version. I remember this game had some awesome music on there. And it I did. Think this is the one that had Paramore. Yes. And this is probably when they first started yeah because i uh yeah i definitely remember it was like right when they were starting to get kind of popular and then i started playing uh sims 2 and i'm like wait that's paramore yeah and then they had this one song and like it was by this ryan guy i back in the day i was like i have to find every song ever by this person (laughs) anytime i found a new person and like his catalog was pretty good but i have not heard from him he just disappeared I really only remember Paramore's. <laughs> they absorbed no idea. him. <laughs> so there was also The Sims 2 Pets. That was technically the fifth installment in the console series. That one was available on Game Boy Advance, GameCube, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 2, PSP, Wii, and Engage platforms. It was released for the Wii on June 13th, 2007, and was also the first console Sims game not to be released on the Xbox interesting Hmm. yeah uh based on the pc expansion pack it features a much less goal-oriented system and is more like free mode of previous games the main element in this game is that the sims can own pets which can be customized and looked after uh this game is different from previous console games as the player is not forced to accomplish goals which was not the main idea of the original sims the player creates and controls the sims they make and in this game there are pets which you need to look after too In the PSP version of Pets, it's very similar to the console version, albeit with more limited gameplay options. Your object limiter is much tighter due to hardware limitations, and the player can build their Sims homes only through special layouts with one, two, or three bedrooms, which are unlocked by aspiration points. Your create a Sim on the PSP is more limited as well, and it does not include clothing styles rather than separate outfits. Does that mean... Like, you just, like, pick out a whole outfit? Maybe. Kind of like, maybe Sims 1, where you... I never played this. I think I had it, but I don't know how often I actually played it. So, I wonder if it was, like, Sims 1, where you just pick your thing. Hmm. Well, if you played uh, Sims 2 Pets on the PSP, let us know. Because we don't know. Uh, But the entire Whiskerton is limited as well, because you only have four buildable lots, two of which are inhabited... One by the newbies, and then one is a, well, the newbie family is the tutorial, and then you have a neighbor, and then two other lots. Uh, Food in The Sims 2 console games can also just be as creative with different foods as with any other Sims game. They can choose from various different ingredients from lots of different categories. The foods available depend on the quality of the fridge, and they can even harvest their own foods like fruits and vegetables from homegrown plants and fish from aquarium. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> Eat your poor um, I, I pet. Kind of, I kind of remember that. <laughs> Having a fish tank and the sim would pull a fish out and go cook it. Aww. Poor bubbles. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can make freestyle food or follow recipes, each with its own effect on your sim. Not just in bladder, hunger, and energy, but emotionally, too. Which all good food does. But yeah, sims can create various different meals with their stoves, energy drinks with their blender and even homemade pet food with their food processor. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Sims may also make group meals if they have enough of everything, get a snack in the form of a crisp packet, or simply get a basic pre-made generic meal. 
Sims can also purchase a grill, which will give them a nice barbecue at 25 simoleons apiece. If they're lucky, while searching the couch, Sims may also find <laughs> an old half sub sandwich, which I remember my Sims doing this too. It says oh it God. may be disgusting, but Sims will eat it and it will cure the hunger motive for a while. Please don't eat food from your couch. <laughs> Please don't keep food in your couch. Yeah, don't keep whole sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Some differences between the console and computer versions. Sims cannot age and die. All Sims in the game are adults, meaning there's no babies, there's no toddlers. Vanity is cheering wherever she is. (laughs) Yes. Uh, There's no children, no no school, no college. Um, And if you want an elder, you just change their hair color so that they look older. Yeah, like lad. Mm Mm-hmm. They'll faint when the hunger bar goes down to zero, so they're not going to die. Pets cannot get jobs or enter competitions. There's no wolves or skunks. No werewolves or ghosts, other than your own playable ones. Uh, Animal control officers do not exist, therefore pets only faint after they get starved enough. It's almost impossible to kill your sims in these console games, I've learned. Yeah, that's true. When either a sim or a pet faints, other sims can revive them by pulling out a bucket of water and throwing it over them, or they can call a paramedic using the phone. If there are awake pets nearby when a sim or another pet they know faints, they will quite often run out of the lot and return with a paramedic, so awesome. Your pets do good for you. Good job, Fido. Yeah. It's known that dogs are slightly more likely to do this than cats, though, which (laughs) I expect nothing less from either one. (laughs) Uh, Even if there's no phone or any other pets or sims, the paramedics will eventually arrive. And while you can still hire maids and gardeners, sims cannot interact with them other than to fire or dismiss them. I do remember having a a maid and she would just like come in, clean the house and then walk away. Sorry, Daniel Pleasant. You can't screw your maid. Nope, not in this one. (laughs) I do remember like just running circles around the maid though to try to slow her down. (laughs) Oh. Oh, so this, was this, uh, like, the other one controlled where you don't point and click, too? Yeah, this was in The Sims 2 one. It was just, like, you you just run around. Okay. And you can either use classic controls with the pointer or direct control where you use the stick. Sims can play chess against chickens that they buy in the town square, and they'll get a golden egg if they win, but it's known to be very hard to win against a chicken. Uh, Sims that get abducted will not get pregnant but they will go to the nearest toilet, sink, or trash can and vomit. And in this version, Sims will get fined if they have a party with music past 11 p.m., though they will have been warned first at 10 p.m. And on rare occasions, if they put too much of their stuff from the object catalog in the town square, you'll get fined. Another strange thing is that pulling lots of prank calls on the phone does not seem to get you in trouble. So prank call anyone you want. You know, I vaguely remember that last part. I do too. I think I played this very, very shortly, and I think I I remember the couch thing, and I remember Mm -hmm. the party, and that's about it. I do remember prank calls, because it got to the point with Goopy that I would just prank call him nonstop. Fuck you, Goopy. Yeah. (laughs) So, on this one, was there a chicken? There was a guy playing checkers with the chicken... In the intro, one of the other games. What was that? I remember that, so I wonder if it was Sims 2 or if I just remember seeing it. Was it Sims 3 even? It might have been in Sims 3. If you know, tell us, because this is like triggering memories. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you get a new NPC, the paramedic, like I said. But there's also the therapist, who can be hired through the phone to change your wants and fears. I think I remember seeing the option for this, but I don't think I ever messed with it. Did it? In The Sims 2, also the PC version, wasn't there a doctor when you had like your, what would be considered, I guess, a mental breakdown when your social got too low? I think so. I think there was something like that, yeah. And it changed your wants and fears? Maybe? I don't remember. Please go listen to our previous episodes on The Sims 2. Yeah. Or continue screaming at (laughs) your phone or whatever you're listening on. (laughs) Yeah. One feature of The Sims 2 console is the mysterious zombie monkey paw, which can be found when searching a couch. 
When found, it will fulfill a random motive of that sim. As would be expected, it is usually found in the more expensive couches, while it's more likely to find an old sandwich in the cheaper ones. I don't think I ever got the zombie monkey paw, but I do remember that it was in there. So, I know that that is part of an old story, Mm -hmm. but I feel like the the monkey paw parable, I guess, is about what that is. Yeah. I feel like that is the thing that was brought up a lot in 2000s stuff. Yeah. Because I remember that in Kim Possible. Yeah, that was like a really popular trope for a while there. The main pets available in The Sims 2 Pets on console are of course your dogs and cats which are highly customizable but you can also buy the pickle puffs which are a cross between the guinea pig and a hamster and you can have that in a cage you can feed play with and clean them but pickle puffs may escape from their cage uh you can also own a goldfish that you can get at the pet emporium in the town square you have to feed and clean them along with all the various aquariums that you can get Uh, You can adopt your pets at the pet purveyors, although they cannot be customized if you get them this way. You can also sell your pets that way, too, which is very sad. Don't don't do that. It breaks my heart. (laughs) As for your pet's genetics, a pet's offspring usually looks like the parent of the same gender, i.e. if the mother is black and white and the father is brown and rust-colored, the puppy, a female, will be black and white with a few rust-colored flecks. Uh, and occasionally, when mixing breeds of dog, the puppy will be the same breed as one of the parents with no hint of the other breed. Such as, like, if you breed a black poodle with a russet-colored collie, the offspring will be a dark brown poodle. Because the poodle has such a bizarre body and fur coat, and there's no way to mix it with the collie. I'm trying to picture a collie doodle. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite things in real life, is seeing, like, corgi mixes. Yes, I want a corgi more than life itself. I do too. And I want... A corgi Shiba Inu, because I just want a little short Shiba Inu. Oh my Inu. god. I can't remember which mix it is, but I found this really cute one. I think it's one of the Collies that are mixed with them, and I'm like, oh my god, you are the cutest. Oh, I want to- Listen, I just- My dog crossed the Rainbow Bridge last year, and all I want is just, like, to hold a puppy. Aww. And I want to just be like, you're a little baby, I love you. Ugh, I just want a dog. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yes. We're- Thinking of getting another one soon. Oh, nice. But, yeah, I just want to hold a puppy, just, like, for a few hours, and just be like, you're a baby, I love you. And then let someone else have to take care of it for a little bit until it has to poop. And then you're like, (laughs) take your dog out. (laughs) It's like with babies. Like, yep. Yes. There you go. Hand that back. (laughs) I will sit with a baby until they start crying or they poop, and I'm like, "Mm, goodbye. Yeah. (laughs) We're done here. So it changes from earlier Sims console games. The two-player mode from previous games was removed. This is just the Sims 2 pets. Uh, The repairman is now referred to in-game as the repair woman in the PS2, GameCube, and Wii versions and repair person in the PSP version. So good job, PSP. Being gender neutral. Love it. Uh, The repairman is, however, not renamed in the Windows version or in the Sims pet stories. Some objects from the herbs, Sims in the City, and The Sims 2 were removed. (laughs) So you got them all over the place in The Sims 2, but in The Sims 2 pets, they pulled them out. Fears have been removed, which is similar to what The Sims Stories games did. The Romance Aspiration was removed. Family and Creativity Aspirations were added. Pet Points were added. Death was replaced with Passing Out, and with the option of being revived. Many game elements run at double the speed as in The Sims 2, due to having a higher frame rate. And if you bought this game, you could unlock Hilary Duff in The Sims 2 Pets for the PC through The Sims Store. That's no longer active, so if you find an old copy somewhere, you're not you're not going to be able to unlock Hilary. Sorry, you have to make your own Lizzie McGuire. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure there's good ones, like in the newer games, like in the Exchange or the Gallery. I was surprised that, like, she actually looked really good. Like, it actually looked like her. Yeah. You got her dog Lola, which I don't... I remember that era where they all, like I mentioned before, Paris Hilton had a little dog. Mm -hmm. Brittany had a little dog. Little dogs were like the accessory to have. And please don't do that in real life. No. They're living, breathing things. They're not not accessories. But I don't remember Hilary Duff being like a specific person who did that. I really only remember Paris and Brittany. She didn't seem like the person that would just have a dog for 
aesthetic. I mean, if they made it enough that she actually has a dog and, like, cares for it, then she probably, like, took care of the dog. Mm-hmm. The Sims 2 Castaways. So, there was the era. Um, I think we covered, I know we covered this because I remember doing a Makeover Monday for this. There was Sim Stories, and there was Castaways, Pets, and I forget, I think it was just Life Story was the first one. This is like the version of that for the consoles, but this is called Sims 2 Castaways, whereas the console was Sims 2 Castaway Stories. And my friend, Holly, hi if you're listening, but um, there it's slightly different on the consoles, and I'll cover that, than it was on the, she has it for the Game Boy, or the DS, again, because they, I don't know why these games are all different, but they are. Somehow they are. Castaway is the third console spinoff of The Sims 2. It was not released, well, like I said, it wasn't released for Windows, but it was called Castaway Stories. It's essentially the same thing. This game's also referenced in The Sims 3, where a TV has a case for The Sims 2 Castaway inside of it. Hmm, interesting. So the story begins on a boat named Simplicity after the player creates a crew. You can make a crew of one to six sims. After you make that, a slideshow starts with mobile pictures that are taken showing the trip and also showing the storm that wrecks the ship. The player's starting sim wakes up on First Beach, Shipwreck Island. The sim finds books detailing goals that they must follow to survive on the islands and escape. Shortly after exploring Shipwreck Island, you discover a second island, Airplane Island, and build a raft to reach the new location. After arriving on the next island, the Sims are united with some of his or her lost crew. The player then has the option to form a tribe of Sims if the relationship is high enough. Didn't Lost come out around that this time? I think so. Okay. Seems very inspired. The player has the option to form a tribe of Sims if the relationship is high enough. While exploring Airplane Island, the player will do radio parts that are crucial to completing a goal later in the game. Then there's a third island, Volcano Island, that can be reached once the player finds the second beach of Airplane Island and builds a canoe. On Volcano Island, the player will discover the remains of the llama people? Llama people. That sounds terrifying. It kind of does. The player has the chance to return to civilization on this island. They can either build a boat or travel to the volcano summit and use the radio parts to send an SOS to a nearby ship. Also, the player can return repair a broken ceremonial forge on Volcano Island that will cause a fourth island, good lord, Crystal Island, to rise out of the sea. The user finds many books along the way, giving him or her various quests. They can be completed in any order. You can also be friend chimps and oh, marry other sims. I thought that said marry the chimps and I was right. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, we got one people <laughs> marrying chimps. What's going on in this game? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Sims can die if hunger motive drops too low, much like other games in the series. The Grim Reaper will not appear, instead their gravestone just appears a few minutes later, and the game ends when the player loses all of their playable Sims. There's no free mode on this. So you pretty much gotta play your storyline out? Yeah. So like on the ones on the computer, there were free play modes after you did the story. I mean, you could kind of do things in between, but yeah, essentially, you know. They wanted you to play the storyline out. Right. And then there's the DS version. So this is, you start on a boat, and then you fall into a crate, and then that crate falls into the ocean. You swim to a nearby string of islands, uh, build a shelter, create a fire, and explore all three islands. There's already four castaways, Dr. Feelgood. I'm going to roll my eyes at that. A doctor who fell from a hot air balloon. Chef Butcher, a chef who fell off a cruise ship. Why are these people falling off a cruise ship? All in the same area, too. What is this? Be careful on cruise ships. I mean, it's not that easy. Uh, 
it's not as easy as just falling into a box. Mm-hmm. Miss Weeder, a farmer who was taken to the island by a tornado, and Susie McDress, a college student. That's probably very scary for her. Yeah. <laughs> After performing several quests for these sims, the player finds all of the pieces of the map on the islands. Following the trail on the map, the sim dives into the sea and finds an abandoned pirate ship. The player and the other four castaways get in the pirate ship and set sail home. After that, the player can continue on the island to get the 100% completion. The Sims Castaway features many new items to the Sims series, including food, clothing, objects, and tools. 100% completion of the game requires the player to find each and every one of these items. The Sims 2 Castaway features many mini games. I think this is. Yes, this is specific for that DS game because I remember Holly telling me about this. These mini games off usually offer items as a reward, such as bugs from the bug collection mini game and fish from the spear fishing mini game. And a new feature in The Sims 2 Castaway is recipes. They require one or two items to create an all new item. So you've got another food creation, and we've kind of just stepped back from there. Yep, <laughs> that one was interesting. Um, and now we are going to move on to The Sims 3, which we did not own. We rented. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that one came out uh, for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. For the first time ever, players could upload and download content via Xbox Live and PlayStation Network, including player creations from the exchange for free and new items released by EA, which cost a fee, unfortunately. And as of July 2018, the exchange for consoles has been shut down. So sorry. But yeah, this was like kind of like the precursor to eventually what they did in The Sims 4. We will give you taps for Sims 4 for giving the same gallery for the console and the PCs. Because these were the exchanges for The Sims 3 PC versus console were completely separate things. So you could have this really awesome house on your PC. You can't send it over to the console. You got to build it all over again. Yeah, but sorry, console, Sims 4 people. You can't use CC. Yeah. But we love you. Maybe maybe Sims 5 will get CC. Yeah. Integrated. They're making it. You can have mods in other games. I don't know why you can on The Sims, but I think yeah. you pay for mods for other games on the, the consoles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think there's something like that. I'm not a big console player. <laughs> uh, my other half, he's like obsessed and I was telling him and he's like, well, why can't The Sims have that? Like, I can't remember what game he said. And he's like, well, that one has it. And I'm like, I don't know. EA's money hungry. I'm surprised they haven't. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to EA. That's above, that's above our pay grade. Sims 3 description. Create Sims with unique personalities. Fulfill their desires and control their lives within a living neighborhood that you can customize. Unlock all new karma powers and unleash them on your Sims. Help your sim get lucky with the power of the love connector. Bless them with the power of age defiler or instant beauty or curse them with an instant enemy. Use these powers wisely because they may have unexpected results. As you guide your sims through life, you can complete challenges to unlock additional items, new buildings, and landmarks. I do remember the karma powers. I I really don't know. It was kind of like the whims a little bit. Like... When you did whims, it would give you, like, points and stuff. And then you could cash those points in. All I remember is that if you used all your karma points in the day, like, it would recharge itself at night. Like, once it hit midnight, like, all these, like, little stars came up from the ground and, like, refilled your karma powers. That's kind of familiar. That was the first thing I noticed that was different between the console and the PC game when I started playing Sims 3 on the PC. Where's my karma powers? Oh, so they did not, it's been so long since I played Sims 3, so they did not have karma powers in Sims 3 on the PC. Not on the PC, it was just in the console. Features, um, yeah, the karma system, the karma powers. Uh, the create a sim tool allows you to create almost any sim you can imagine. Uh, the number of customizations available is countless. You can also set the personality with a huge choice of personality traits. Wishes are up to you to fulfill. You have the choice of allowing your sim's dreams to come true or not. You can complete challenges to unlock additional items, new buildings, and landmarks. And I do remember this because I bought, like, part of a park that was in my little neighborhood. Oh, 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing about Sims 3 is that it was kind of set up like the way Sims 4 is, where you have like your house and then like a couple other lots. Otherwise, if you go somewhere else, you need to go through a loading screen. It was not open world like the PC version was. Okay. You do have your life cycles in this one. You can have children. The PS3 and 360 versions, like I said, feature the exchange. These versions do not have direct controls like Sims 2 did, but instead use traditional controls as seen in Sims 3 for PC. You just like moved your little joystick around and a little white light would follow around to where you needed to click. Uh, You could connect with Facebook and Twitter to share your achievements and trophies with others. I remember this. I do too. Uh, The game supports 360 achievements and PlayStation 3 trophies. The neighborhood has short loading times when moving between areas, unlike the PC and the Wii. And the game features challenges to complete and rewards players for completing them by giving them challenge points, which can be used to purchase new karma powers, clothes, furniture, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Downloadable content. EA released stuff for The Sims 3, both paid and free, which you could get from the PlayStation Store or Xbox Live Marketplace. Uh, Some of the paid content was like the Asian Fusion Pack, which gave you a bunch of furniture. And (laughs) Uh, this furniture collection always has a sense of humor, much like a fortune cookie. Um, Uh, Okay. Little little racist, I think. Yeah. (laughs) Moving on, you got the Ultra Lounge Pack, which is chic and sleek, kind of like the 70s look. It has strong lines, curves, and an eclectic mix of metals and woods. Definitely 70s era there. I probably would have liked that. Mm Mm-hmm. I kind of incorporate a lot of the wood paneling in The Sims 3 stuff. Oh, me and my friend were talking about how back, like, so we're in our 30s. We probably remember this a little bit more than a lot of people nowadays. I don't know how many houses still have this, but you always had a wood panel on one wall. And then the other walls were like weird things. Like in my old house when I was a kid, we had ducks, like ducks in the snow. So one panel was wood and then the other were ducks in the snow. Nice. And like she showed me pictures and she's like, Here's another wood panel room from the 80s. (laughs) I think uh, my grandma's house had that, but all of her other walls in that room were like openings to other rooms, so she really didn't have anything to decorate it with. But I do remember the one wood paneled wall. I'm glad that houses stopped doing that. Yeah. (laughs) This is my accent wall. (laughs) Uh, You could also buy the hairstyles pack, which gave you Moonlight Bay hairstyles. I would love that too. You get the ultra lounge kids bedroom. So you have an ultra hip bedroom and the ultra lounge teen set. So you have their own style too. That just screams hello fellow kids. Yes, it does. It really does. (laughs) Ultra lounge too hip. Oh boy. Uh, The trailer for the Sims 3 console They released it uh, June 14th, 2010, and it shows many of the original features of The Sims, such as cycling around town, changing your Sims appearance. It also shows the newly added features, such as karma powers. When a female Sim is exposed outside a restaurant, leaving her totally nude with only the blur to cover her, presumably after doing something bad. The trailer also showed that unlike previous games, players are allowed to build more than one floor. I did this. I goofed around and made like a two-story house. Oh, I thought that you couldn't do that. No. Oh. I didn't think you could either for the longest time, and then I started running out of room, and I'm like, what if I just mess around with this, and I suddenly created a second floor? That's cool. Uh, Another feature shown was the ability to have children in the game, unlike its predecessors. All right, so we've got a Wii version. I did not, I definitely didn't play this. We didn't play a lot of, we have a Wii We didn't play a lot on it, so I don't know much about this. We didn't either. I think our Wii, we only had, like, Mario Kart. Yeah. um, We had, like, because my partner's obsessed with, like, sword games, so we had, like, Bayonetta and other stuff that you could take a sword and Resident Evil. Yeah, that that was mainly what, like, my brothers had. Games like that. Yeah. And as an old um, arcade game, and there were zombies on that. He is, like, obsessed with that game. So in the Wii version, you can play with three friends in the Life Moments game. The neighborhood is called Vista Beach. Um, you've got your karma powers again. And that's basically what you had before. 
you have weather can be controlled by karma powers. I don't, could you do that on that one? The other one? I think so. I think I remember uh, striking one of my Sims with lightning. Okay. Well, they, yeah, they said in the thing that you could strike her with lightning. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Players can play new life moments, game with up to four players, bet on life's most important moments to earn points and garner rewards. And that sounds interesting. That does. Some traits, careers, lifetime wishes, and weather are exclusive to the Wii version of the game. Um, doesn't tell which ones, so sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> gotta play it to find out. Yeah. The Wii version offers direct control, which will give the players the use of the nunchuck controls in the Wii mode. The beach city can be explored seamlessly with no loading screen, similar to the PC. Sims are able to surf and swim. Exclusive skate park community lot in tourism career. I would have, like, eaten that crap up. Oh, yeah. Megalomaniacs are introduced, similar to Ambitious and Snob. So the reception has been mixed. Um, some gaming sites gave it medium ratings, though many players have said that the game is just very glitchy. Glitches have been known to include sims around town dying randomly in the street. Oh no. <laughs> that still happens. Yeah. <laughs> a very confusing fire code that doesn't allow a player to place furniture in an empty house that they just bought and objects stop working. The game has also been heavily criticized for not allowing players to build their own houses, rather living in pre-made shells that can be furnished by the player. EA said that it cannot fix glitches on the Wii. I think that I had, like, a list of glitches before, and it was just, like, two pages long, and I'm oh, like, geez. no, we don't need to do that. Wii equals glitch city, so just keep that yeah, in mind. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, So, like, The Sims 3... For PS3 and Xbox 360, this game has been compared with the Windows and Mac. Unlike other versions, though, the Wii had a regional lockout. So, if you don't know, regional lockouts are... I feel like Nintendo and Sega have done this a lot. Mm -hmm. Where you can only play in Japan or... And the Japanese version will not work on an American console. You'd have to get a jail... I think you can jailbreak them. I don't remember. But you'd have to either get a jailbroken one or a Japanese console. Very much like DVDs. Oh, I didn't know DVDs did that. Oh, yeah. Like, I I I buy, like, Doctor Who DVDs and I have to make sure that they're not European. Because otherwise oh. they won't work on most of my computer and stuff. Oh, I didn't know they did that. Mm-hmm. I think more and more they are making them multi-regional, but, like... Yeah, up until a certain point, a lot of DVDs were, like, region-locked. That's so silly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's criticism, though, on here. They do this a lot um, with, like, the Wii games. My partner's a huge gamer, so, like, I've heard a lot about this. Like, Wii games will cost more than, like, a computer game or, like, an Xbox 360. So, like, the Wii ha is going to have less. It's $50 for a Wii game for the sims 3 whereas it was 60 for the ps and xbox and it Ooh. was only 40 on the computer eventually they lowered the ps3 and xbox they lowered all of them back down to like the pc cost this is why i rented <laughs> yes i mean eventually all games are going to go down in price but they really shouldn't be that much of a discrepancy god no the Wii version lacks create a sim in game and also lacks ages like babies, toddlers, and young adults, which are not playable. The gender of the child isn't revealed until the player names them. Interesting. It's possible for a sim to become pregnant even when they are aging into an elder. Oh, no. The baby will not be born and the sim will remain pregnant until their death. Jeez. That is troubling. Yeah. That's, uh... I feel like that has actually happened and people have to go to the hospital for that. Yeah, that that's one thing that I've heard and that kind of always like weirds me out is like people that get pregnant but they lose the pregnancy but they never knew they were pregnant so they're holding that and yeah. it like like calcifies inside of them. Friends, if you have a uterus, please get checkups because that's yes. scary. Yeah. Always always get yourself checked out. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, if a Sim has a child and immediately tries for baby after, they will be brought to the hospital again and another child will be born. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait six to eight weeks, don't you know? It's like immediate, like, pop it right up. <laughs> Here it comes. Are you twins? No. No. She was born the next day. Yeah. A couple hours later. You can't have fools in the Wii version. So Sims 4 was like, hey, hey. Guess what? they didn't care about that, right? <laughs> Once a player exits, create a Sim, a half. That sucks. A Sim's outfits and hairstyle cannot be changed for the rest of the game. Boo. <laughs> so you got to make sure that you really like what your Sim looks like. Yeah. I hope they at least gave you a thing as like, hey, are you sure this is what you want your Sim to look like? Yeah. This is the last time. Um, plates of food can get stuck under fridges, making them unable to be used. Sims cannot be invited out, only invited to one's homes. So, that's a pre-pandemic, uh, idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, while the PS3, DS, and Windows Mac are region-free, the Wii and 3DS are region-locked. Um, so that actually happened with the older games, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think the Sims... Either the Bustin' Out or Sims 1 was region locked. It was Sims 1 was region locked on the um, GBA, I think. So then, spoiler alert, you'll learn this next episode. The, basically, you then had the Sims Bustin' Out for GBA was just the Sims 1 version of what was of the Japanese version mm. of the game. So, since since the Wii does not have challenge features from the PS3 and Xbox, using cheats will not cause any penalties. Um, If a player has a baby, it will be a child. If due to being born, a child's not at school, this will count as skipping, and homework will be incomplete. (laughs) Sorry, I was just born and don't know how to do homework. Oh, well, Tony. Why are you not at school today? Because I was just born. That's not an excuse. Go to detention. <laughs> Despite the fact vegetarians can be created, special veggie foods like tofu dog are unavailable. Just die, apparently. <laughs> yeah, how? That's kind of rude. Very rude. All neutral moodlets are absent. Moodlets such as sleepy and stuffed have a negative five slash plus five mood effect, respectively. Okay, so sleep, sleepy would have a negative five, stuff would have a positive five. Yeah, so if if you have a mood, it's going to affect you instead of the ones that just, like, are there. Right. Players can move their sim with the joystick on the nunchuck instead of clicking where the players want them to go. So, like, Sims 2. And the school bus doesn't exist in the Wii version, and instead, children take the carpool to school. That's some <laughs> rich kid stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then there's the 3DS version. So I looked this up because I thought that sounded cool. Um, the camera angles take advantage of the 3D view. So, like, you can take a picture and it would, like, map your face to it. But, like, I looked it up and it looked kind of weird. Mm. Kind of creepy. And you can take a picture of a real-life person and have them created as a sim and trade sims with the Nintendo Street Path. So... I don't know that the Switch has this, but the DS had this thing where you would, like, leave your DS in, like, sleep mode, and you could go out in public, and back when that just came out, there was more people who did this, but, um, you could, like, walk by somebody, and, like, it would grab their me, and then, like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. So, I guess you could do this with this, too. So, here's some trivia. Both this game and the 3DS version of The Sims pets were on Origin, but have been removed. The Sim, or this game, comes with a neighborhood, however the neighborhood is unnamed. Comes with several townies. If you befriend the townies, you can unlock their outfits and hairstyles. Unlike Sims 3 for DS, the game removed open world. So it's more like the PS3 and Xbox 360. Uh, then... Sims 3 console also had the Pets version. It's a standalone game for consoles. It was released for PS3, Xbox 360, and the 3DS. Sugar Maple Coast is the town for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Port Able is the town you get on the DS, the 3DS. Uh, the 360 version features support for the Kinect motion sensor. I just 
got port able, portable. <laughs> portable. I, <didn't> <laughs> I like that. Sims team, you, you do good sometimes. You really do. I love your naming. <laughs> The game sees a return of pets from The Sims 2. However, the console version of The Sims 3 pets only features cats and dogs. You can play as your own pet that you create, so much like the PC version. There are more than 100 breeds of dogs and cats with traits that can be altered, such as fur length and pattern. You can obtain new breeds, such as Dog Tiger Husky, a Dog Panda Chow, a Cat Skunk Bird Berman, as well as other additional pets. I didn't know what a Birdman either, and Google's like Birdman, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I almost said Birdman, but I'm like, it can't be Cat Skunk Birdman. (laughs) Pets have their own traits and can learn skills. There are a total of 30 possible pet traits. In Create a Pet, each pet can be given up to two traits. Pets can learn up to 11 traits, and they can also unlearn them too. Some traits are unique to one species, some can be for any species. There are also some traits that will conflict with each other. Cats and dogs can learn to hunt. Dogs can learn to locate collectibles and fetch your sims a date. Interesting. Uh, You can control the animals and they can have their own desires. Life stages for the pets are puppy slash kitten, then adult and elder. Pets can meet, fall in love, and reproduce, giving them their own family trees. They can also have inherited genetics. There are also new motives, destruction for dogs and scratch for cats. And the karma powers are back in this one. And there are some negative karma powers that relate to the animals. That's basically Sims 3 Pets. And that brings us to basically the present. We got Sims 4 on the console. And this one's going to be really quick because I'm sure most of you know (laughs) all about this one right now. Unlike previous console releases in this series, The Sims 4 for console is a conversion of the original PC game, but certain features such as community sharing are absent. You are unable to have mods or custom content, which we have talked about. In addition, many of the cheats for the PC will also work on the console and can be invoked by holding all four shoulder buttons on the joypad. The gallery was added to both the PS4 and Xbox versions on January 16th, 2020. I forgot that was a more recent thing. Yeah. And you know, I definitely think we talked about this in a social bunny, but yeah, yeah. That was almost two years ago now. <laughs> uh, so, PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold subscriptions are not required to access the gallery, only an EA account is required. Console players are freely able to share content with PC and Mac players, and vice versa, which is a game changer. And if you've seen any of our monthly build streams, you will know that console players are just as good builders as PC builders. Yeah. Kate is an amazing builder. Julia is always like, here we go, Kate, with our console. She's like, I just love it. Kate does such beautiful things on the console. And it's always like... She really does. Uh, Yeah, definitely tune into our monthly build streams to see some awesome console builds from Kate. But yeah, those who pre-ordered the Deluxe Party Edition of The Sims 4 console game were able to play the game three days early on November 14th, 2017. Anybody who had an EA Access subscription on the Xbox One were also able to trial the game ahead of the release. And the base game was made free to all EA Access subscribers July 12th, 2018. But yeah, that's, that's all the console games from Sims 2 till now. If you want to hear about everything pre-Sims 2, make sure you stick around for our next episode where Jen and Vanity will talk about all that early 2000s goodness. Yeah, that stuff is literal. Like, if you want to see early 2000s, if you want to be like, oh my god, I remember this. That's just a throwback. Everything is a throwback, including the Black Eyed Peas. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Stick around for that episode coming soon to ya. Um, So, we've got our website now. We were down for a few days, so sorry if you tried to um, get on there in the meantime. Um, But we just had a little hiccup. But we're back. Um, We're plumbobcastnow.com. Yep, yep. Definitely keep that. If you have us bookmarked on anything, change your bookmarks. Our URL is now plumbobcast.com. And um, so we're plumbobcast on Instagram, Twitter. 
Plum Bob Podcast on Reddit, under the Plum Bob Podcast on Facebook and Tumblr. Please go to Tumblr. I, I feel like Tumblr's probably dying, but... Yeah, but yeah, Jen's still there, fighting the good fight for Don't us. yell at me. Be like, hey, you said some very wrong things, and I need to tell you. <laughs> on Tumblr. <laughs> yes. And you can do it anonymously, so I won't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a contact form, or you can email us, um, a contact form on our website, or you can email us under the Pump Bob Podcast at Gmail. And subscribe, rate, and review. We're on anything we can think of. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play, Pandora. If we don't have it, tell us because we don't know anything else that exists. Yep. And the important ones are Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review and leave us a rating. Don't give us a one. We will never stop talking about it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I noticed on Spotify that you can rate podcasts now. So give us a five-star rating on Spotify. Yeah, we love five stars. Yeah, five stars. Thanks, Jen, for doing all this research for these episodes. So this was like the bane of my existence because there's just so much stuff. There's so many characters in all this. Um, But it's here and I'm happy that it's here. Um, and I use Sims Wiki um, for almost all of this, especially this one for sure. It was Sims Wiki. But not just me. Thank all of you for listening because we can't do this without you. Yes. And we're grateful for you guys as a fandom and your enthusiastic support. Yeah. We love having you here listening to us and sharing with us and talking to us. Yeah. And the Discord is very bumping. So yeah. check us out on Patreon. Yes. We love it. We love new people. We love celebrating. Jess is like, there's a new person. And we're like, yay, new yay. people. <laughs> it's always fun. You get the welcome wagon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. That's that's all from us this week. So we're going to go back to the real world. Save your game. Don't forget that. Save, Save your, game. your game. Drink your water. Wash your hands. Yes. Wear your mask. All of the fun stuff that we are still, still telling you. Keep doing it. Vaccinate yourself. Um, get your booster if you don't. It's been a while. Yeah. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. 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 Dag, dag. Dag, dag.